In this video, we're going to learn to use the Digitize Shape tool, which is found here on the left-hand toolbar. And there are several options. When I mouse over that tool, it flies open with the Outline Shape tool, Freehand Shape tool, and Magic Wand tool. And I will show how to use each of these tools in detail. Uh, but before I begin, I will also point out that the Artistic Digitizer software is capable of entering points and creating shapes using different modes to accommodate users of other software. And what I mean by all of this is if you look under your Tools drop-down menu for Options, there is a tab for Tools. And under that tab for Tools, there is the section to set your Digitizer tool. And it comes based on Context menu. This is the default for the Artistic Digitizer software. And if you're new, I highly recommend just using this. And I will do um, the beginning of my demonstration on the tools using context menu. However, it's possible to change to drawings mode, Genomi Digitizer mode, or Bezier tool, which will change the way these tools work based upon other software. So if you're using a previous version of the drawing software, you may wish to switch to that mode. If you use the Genomi Digitizer version 5 or 4 or previous, you may wish to use Digitizer this mode for in it will change the way that you enter points so like i said we're going to start with the default context menu i'm just going to say okay it warns me that the changes will be applied next time the program starts i didn't actually make any changes so i'm not concerned but when we get to that stage then we'll we'll do that step so i've opened a new design with a clean white background and a grid turned on so that we can see what I'm drawing. And this is the tool Digitize Outline Shape. And when I click, it makes a point. And as I drag, it draws a line between the first point I drew and the second one. And I click again, left click. And the points are blue. And that means they're auto smooth. And so the software as I draw these points, will adjust the curve to be natural based upon the point that I've clicked on, based upon the previous point and the next point. And so by moving this next point, I can actually adjust. It changes the way the curve is going to smooth out. And so that is auto smoothing, and it's perhaps the easiest to use and easiest to learn. And if I hold down the shift key on my keyboard, I will get a red corner point. So I can combine the blue auto curve points with holding shift down to get red corner points. Going back to the blue points. And then at any time, if I want to control the curve more, I can click and drag. And when I click and drag, I create a green point that has tangent lines. So watch me do it again. Click and drag and see how I'm creating these arrows. And the further I drag, the more that arrow is going to affect the curve of the line before it and therefore the, also the curve of the line after it. If I just simply click, I get blue points. When I click and drag, I get the... So the blue points are auto smooth. The green points are smooth based upon the tangents that we draw. And of course, the shift clicks give us the corner points that have no smoothing. When I right click, I'm given the option to finish the section, to close the section, or end the shape. And I'm going to start with end shape. And so I've drawn this line. And I'm still in the digitizer tool. So if I want to draw another line, I can. And when I right click and say end shape, I've drawn two independent lines. If I hit enter or choose the selection tool, I will finish drawing lines and I've gone back to select mode. But I've drawn two lines that are independent of each other. Sometimes we like to have lines that are joined together. And the way we would do that is to use the outline shape tool, draw the first line. And then when you right click, you say finish section. Now we can draw another section of the same object. And so I'll draw a line that comes, you know, like this. Right click, finish section, and draw another line. And right click. And I could draw as many sections as I want until I choose end shape. And 
when I choose end shape, this is where the, the, the three lines get joined as one, and you can see that the software is connecting the lines based upon the closest connection point in between. So again, you right, you left click to draw lines, right click to finish a section, left click to draw the line, right click to finish the section, or end the shape. Now, in this same method, if I draw a section and I connect my last point to my first point, it will close that shape. And now I'll right click and say end shape. And you'll see that I've created a shape that includes fill stitches and outline stitches. And so the difference is if you draw a line that is not closed, that is open and you finish it, it is an open line and open lines will only include outline stitches. However, if we draw a line where the first join, the first and last points join, it will be closed. We can draw multiple shapes. In other words, I can still draw another section to this object. But when I right click and say end shape, now these two point, two oval shapes that I drew are really joined as one and they are connected together and they're stitched together, which is very different from drawing in two independent ones. And in this same method, you can draw shapes that have holes. So if I outline a shape and it close it and then make another section on top of it, which is also closed, so I need to close the second section it joins those two sections and creates a hole where the, the two sections, I guess, overlap. And again, right click to end that shape. So in that same method, then we could draw a shape that has multiple holes. So there's the first section. Now we'll draw a triangle and a square-ish shape and a circle ish shape and then right click and say end shape and we've created a background fill with several holes in it so that is by joining two sections in one object with closed shapes so in general that is how it works other things of note um, to point out would be for example when drawing a shape and then i right click and finish my section. When I'm drawing my next section, if I bring my mouse over top of the previous point, it'll actually just pick up the previous section and allow me to keep drawing it. So if any time you finish a section but you wish to join, you know, continue on, you just bring your next point over top of the previous point and that will allow you to continue drawing those points. When you're done, then I guess you right click and say end that shape. Another detail that's worth pointing out when drawing shapes is that if you've drawn a shape and you no longer like the way that you drew it, you can use the backspace key on your keyboard to release the previous points and then draw them again in another way, however um, you, know, you wish. So on an Apple keyboard, that may be the delete key that you push to go backspace. But the idea is that you can while drawing, you can release the points by using the backspace key on your keyboard. And again, you right click to end the shape. So now let's go ahead and begin to talk about the freehand digitizing tool. And with freehand digitizing, you use it more like you would use a pen. So if I start to click and drag, I'm drawing my line. And when I let go, I've drawn a segment, a section of the line. And I can draw another line by simply clicking and dragging. And another line by clicking and dragging again. And it's not until I right click that it closes the section. And it, all of those lines have been joined together in one object. And right click again to stop drawing lines. And so with the freehand tool, it can be a little bit... Um, fun especially if you use for example a tablet uh, like a com 
a tablet monitor or even a desktop tablet like a Wacom tablet because it can feel very natural to take the freehand tool and draw with it. Um, something else to be mentioned about freehand drawing, again I can close the shape so by just bringing in the first point to the last point I can freehand draw a closed shape. I can freehand draw holes in my closed shape and I can right click to end those shapes. Uh, but when you're using the freehand drawing tool, you have a smoothness option. And notice that based upon how squiggly my line is and how quickly I draw it, the software will help smoothen that. And if I turn this down to, let's say, zero and try and draw um, a, you know, a real squiggly line, it'll follow it more closely you know, versus putting a higher number in here, 25, and then I try and draw a squiggly line and it smooths that out. And so that is something that if you're using the freehand drawing tool, that you will develop an opinion about what number works best for you, kind of based upon, well, I guess how smooth you, smoothly you draw in the first place and the pace or the speed with which you move your mouse or your drawing pen, as the case may be. So when I right click, I finishes drawing those shapes and connects them all together as one object. So again, draw a line, makes a section, draw a line, makes a section, right click, finishes making sections, start drawing a new line for a part of a new object. So that is the freehand tool. So now let's look at the magic wand tool as our third tool option. And to make it easy for the magic wand tool, perhaps I will quickly click on my browser tab and create some embroidery based on this artwork. And so for example, if I turn on the magic wand tool and mouse over top of the design, notice that my pointer has become a magic wand tool and it's the star of the magic wand, which is the point. And if I click on top of the heart right here, it creates a new embroidery object. And the new embroidery object is based upon the common outline of whatever you click on. So in this case, I clicked on the red heart and it gave me the outline of the red heart and the inside outline of the flower. If I use the tool to click on the flower, it'll give me a duplicate of the flower. See that? If I place the flower over top of this other flower petal, and then I use the tool to click on that flower petal, it'll give me the outline of that flower, of that tulip, that includes the outline of where this other flower overlaps with it. And so that is your magic wand tool, and it can be used to help create new objects based upon the shapes that are already on your screen. Well, before I talk about the other methods of using these tools, one more thing I could probably point out when you're drawing shapes like your outline shape, um, you can use under your view drop down menu on your grid or on guidelines snap. And if snap is turned on, what that means is when you're digitizing shapes, if you mouse close enough to a grid point, it will snap directly onto the grid line. And so with that way, you can easily, um, you know, create points based upon, you know, a certain grid angle. You know, if you wanted to hold shift down and make a square that was perfectly square, that sort of thing, you could easily snap to the grid. So when you have snap to grid turned on, then points will snap to the grid. If you want to turn it off, you can um, obviously, I guess if I end this shape, go back into your view toolbar grid and uncheck that. If you don't have it checked on and you're drawing points and that snap to grid is not turned on and you wish to, you can hold the alt key down and that will help it to snap to your grid sort of on the fly. Right click, say end shape to finish drawing the shape. So that was another point that I thought was worth bringing into the conversation. Now let's move forward. Well, before I can show the other methods, we'll need to visit our tools and options menu for tools and then change the digitizer tool from context menu to the other three options, which are the drawings, the Jeremy digitizer and the Bezier tool. And I'll begin with the drawings and say, okay. And so I'll need to restart 
to apply those settings. So the software is restarted and I'll just use my create new button to create a new empty workspace and perhaps zoom in a little bit closer. Now when I use the outline shape to create a to digitize a new shape and I left click I get the auto points. If I left click and drag I get the curved bezier points and if I hold shift key down I get the corner points. So very much the same as it was before. What's different here from the newest version which is what I already demonstrated is when I right click it automatically closes the shape, closes the section and allows me to draw the next section. When I right click it automatically finishes a section and if I want to finish the shape I simply right click a second time. And so what we don't get when we use the drawings mode is the context menu, the actions menu that allows you to choose to directly end the shape. So it's a slightly different method of, of way of inputting the points. And like I said, it's mainly if you're already used to using a certain method that you want to change that. So now let's go ahead, take a look at how would this be different if we changed it um, to the Janome digitizer, which I think is uh, a bigger change than changing just from the sort of the newest version of the artistic digitizer software and the previous drawings versions. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say OK and restart the software. OK, I'm clean and restarted. And now we'll use the same outline shape tool in Janome digitizer mode. And notice now when I choose that tool, left clicking by default gives me the corner points. And to get the blue curve points, I have to right click. Now I can right click and drag. No, nope. I only right click. So there's no green curve points, only left clicks and right clicks. Now with the, this version, you hit enter to finish a section, which would allow me to draw another section until I hit enter. And if I hit enter twice in a row, that will close the section and allow me to start drawing a new object. So first enter breaks the segment. Second one time breaks the segment. Hitting enter two times in a row closes the object and connects everything together. And so that is the Janome digitizer version and how it's different. And so one more to look at and I'll just go tools, options, and switch again this time to the Bezier tool mode, say OK, and do my restart. OK, so we're restarted and this time I'm going to switch to the digitize outline tool and demonstrate using Bezier tool mode. And notice now when I Oh, let me turn on the tool, sorry. When I left click, I get corner points. When I right click, I end the shape. But I'm still part of the same object. So I can left click. If I want to curve, I left click and drag. And I get green tangent points, which is also known as Bezier curves. This whole method of clicking and dragging is the Bezier curve model. And again, in this case, right click to finish drawing a segment and right click to finish an object based on however many segments you made. So now I'm drawing a new object and I right click and or left click and drag to make my curves. I right click to stop drawing a section. I right click again to finish drawing and not create any new sections. And that is the Bezier mode. And so you'll see they're all very similar. And once you get the swing of this tool, it's very easy to use. But I do recommend if you're a new user and you're not somebody who's sort of stuck in their ways to um, to learn to use the base model, which the, the, the one that gets installed with the software, I think it gives the most options and works the best on context menu. And so I'll go ahead and restart that and hope you enjoyed the video on learning to use the digitize tool.